The following program has been paid for by Right Road Productions, Incorporated. Welcome to TTYS, the teen voice in our thoughts. Our opinions on the world and what we face today. Tune in for other fun segments for our show, like teen travel, sports, video games, and app reviews. Teen fashion, movie reviews, and teens that make a difference. I'm Lexi. Nico. Justin. And I'm Sydney. Welcome, Welcome to TTYS. <laughs> I can feel inside of me that this season is mine. Okay, let me give you a rundown on what to expect today. That is a racetrack out there for real. If you're paying attention or not, you absolutely will pick up something that will make you a better driver. There's not many things we can give a guarantee to, but I think I can guarantee it. Today, consider this car to be your dancing partner. All right? This is dancing with the cars. I wish you all safe driving. Yes. Thank you. Okay, don't overthink it. Understeer. It's understeering. It's not steering. It's not doing what you want to do. You want to turn right, and it's not turning right. It's kind of going straight. You've asked too much of the front tires. Now they're sliding. So you have to ask less of those front tires, which means just subtly bring the steering wheel back just enough to get the wheels rolling again. That's when you've regained control of the car. That's when it will respond and start steering again. Oversteer, it's oversteering, it's steering too much. That means you've turned, the front end has grabbed, and the back end is sliding out. What you have to do, so it doesn't spin out completely, like we saw a little earlier there, you have to counter steer. So, all right, you're making a right turn, the back end slides out, you have to counter steer to stop that rotation. If it starts to continue to slide, you have to keep turning to try to stop that rotation. Once it stops, there'll be a slight pause, and then the car's going to want to snap back on center. Watch my hands. As it snaps back on center, bring the steering wheel back on center. If you don't bring it back on center, watch. The car straightens up. Which way is the steering wheel pointing? Going that way. It's going to pull you then. So as the car straightens up, straighten your steering wheel. Okay, so you just heard from our instructor about over and under steering. So now Nico, Lexi, and Sydney are behind us now practicing out on the skid track.
All of the hair and makeup on TTYS is done by the wonderful ladies at Philip Felici. They're definitely a cut above the rest. Hi, I'm Max, and this season you're gonna see my face all hey. over. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. You're gonna see my face all over the show, and it's gonna be hidden somewhere. And we're gonna have a contest for you guys to try to find it. And the winner is gonna get a pair of Beats headphones. Ooh. You guys can find out more info on the challenge at TTYSTV.com. Hi, we're here at Pittsburgh International Race Complex, and our panelists are now learning how to use their brakes quickly and safely. Alright, so let's go try. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Well, okay, <laughs> So they're learning about the emergency lane change maneuver, which is whenever there's an obstacle on the highway, so you have to quickly change lanes to get out of the way. We've put together a bunch of helpful tips on safe driving on TTYSTV.com. Now here's our lane change. We're going to get in the same way. Okay, we see the emergency. Brakes, release, light throttle, and aggressive steering. Whoa. No, that is so tight. I feel like that is impossible. Absolutely. So what you guys are going to do right now is uh, our public rental carts. Um, these are carts that anybody can come up and rent between noon and eight any day. Um, they are nine and a half horsepower Honda engines, so they do about 45 miles an hour. Uh, they go around what's called the Wilson circuit up here. That's the track. 
Um, it's 0.8 miles, so almost a full mile long. Um, the best of the best racers can get it in those parts, can get around in about 75 seconds, which is a really good time. Um, we just paved it, so it's one of the smoothest, newest tracks around. Uh, we hold about four or five national and international events on it per year, so people are welcome to come up at any time and watch some of the professional carters, and those guys can actually get up to about 80 miles an hour on it, so it's a pretty impressive show. Today we got to spend the whole day at the Pittsburgh International Race Complex where we got to do the car control training course, which taught us simulated um, experiences that could happen in the real world, such as panic situations where you might have to stop suddenly or swerve to avoid an object. And we learned a lot of things that we hope you can pick up on as well. And we had so much fun doing we it. We killed it. <laughs> it was so fun. So I got I got to ride the course, but you guys actually got to experience driving yeah. it. So how was that like? Driving was crazy. Amazing, like the best experience ever. It was scary. Well, when we first got in the car, we were like, oh my, I don't know how we're going to deal with this. And once we got started, like, we did not stop. I think for me, when you guys were driving and I was sitting in the back is where I felt a little more panicked. It was Just because you were thrown yeah. around. But I felt like I had control when I was behind the wheel. It was so cool. We so when she off. goes, I'm like holding on for dear life. Like, oh my gosh. Like, But then when you're in, like you said, you're in control and you feel yeah, so much feel more comfortable like, yeah. and confident. So we, we started off with simple exercises where we had to slam the brakes which those were hard, let alone what we led up to. In the beginning, we were like, we were all very kind of like anxious and nervous. Yeah. And I was like 20 miles per hour, super slow. By the end, she's telling me, Nico, pedal to the floor. Pedal. Like I was yeah. like flying yeah, like as fast as the car could go. And crazy. then like jerking left and right, just the best day ever. But it was super educational. So we learned how to handle these situations, yeah. how to be safe on yeah. the road. It was a great learning experience. I feel like such a better driver yeah, now than too. I was before. I'll know what to do in an emergency. Yeah. It was a good mix between like fun activity, get in this car, be crazy, go. Yes. But at the same time, we learned so much that we can really apply and now yeah. be better, safer drivers. Absolutely, and if you guys are interested in coming to the course, you can go to pitrace.com. Hey everyone, I'm Eve. And I'm Teresa. Today we're going to be showing you some of our favorite summer essentials. Hey everyone, I'm Eve. And I'm Teresa. Today we're going to be showing you some of our favorite summer essentials. So first, we like to start off with a big bag that we can take to the beach or to the pool, just so we can carry everything. And inside, I like to keep my tanning sunscreen because I don't burn very easily. So. Now for those of you who do burn easily, like me, you gotta have a good sunscreen. And one of my favorites is by Neutrogena. This one is really lightweight and it gives you that dry feel after you do it. But it also has great coverage, so it's my favorite. And of course, you gotta bring a wet brush because you don't want your hair to get tangled. And if it does, it just becomes a mess, so you gotta make sure you brush it out when you get out of the water. And like, the wet brush is my favorite type of brush because it's so gentle on your hair. Another thing you really have to have is chapstick. I love Blistex because it's, it's medicated lip balm, but it also has SPF, so it really does a great job of protecting your lips. I always bring a cover up with me, so whenever I get out of the pool or the ocean, I can just throw it on over my swimsuit and I don't have to put regular clothes back on. Another thing you obviously have to have would be a pair of sunglasses because you gotta protect your eyes and, you know, they're cute and stylish. Definitely. I always bring a spray bottle because the summer heat can be so hot that I just need to cool mist. Another thing you really gotta have is a portable phone charger. This one's by Jackery. I got it on Amazon for about $30, and it really holds a lot of charge. You can get like a lot of uses on your phone for this, and it'll it's just one of my favorite chargers. I always bring gum with me because you never know whenever you'll be eating, and you just always gotta bring it. It's an essential of mine. Um, a product that I really like is Cetaphil Lotion. It does a great job at reviving your skin after you get a sunburn and it's like a thicker formula so you can put it on at night and let it soak in overnight and it works its magic. 
Lastly, I love to wear loose fitting clothing whenever you're going to the pool or the beach because you want something that you can easily take on and off all day. So, these are our summer essentials. You wanna go hit the cabana? Definitely. Let's go. I'm Christina. And I'm Miles. Hi, you're watching Pet Corner here on TTYS. Hi, I'm Amber. I'm Christina. And I'm Miles. Hi, today we're at Pet Corner on TTYS. Incorporating a pet into your home takes a lot of thought and preparation, especially if you already have another one at home. This is great. So if you already have an animal at home, one of the things that you can do is make sure that you don't introduce the animals in the house, meet on neutral grounds, maybe take them for a walk outside if you have a dog, and just kind of let them get to know each other out there and then see um, if you can gradually get them to be friends, bring them into the house, and then maybe not just give them full run of the house, but separate them out, like maybe keep one in the kitchen for a while. If I have a pet at home, how will I know how it will interact with one here? If you want to see how they interact together, you can actually bring your pet here and if say you have a dog, you can bring them to our meet and greet areas. We have one inside and outside so you can take them out for a leash and see how they go together. Thank you so much. Now is my favorite part of the segment where we introduce our dog of the week. We tend to get a lot of puppies here and puppy season is coming up. Um, a lot of the local shelters tend to be overrun with them as well as kittens. For more information on this pet or any other pets that need a home, please visit PetAdoptionLeague.org. Thank you so much for watching our TTYS Pet Corner. See you next week. I'm Jessica, and you're watching In the Kitchen with Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica, and welcome to In the Kitchen with Jessica. Today we have Sydney, TTYS panelist here, to help us make a fresh summer salsa. Thanks so much for having me, Jessica. I'm really excited about this snack because it's a great option for me, being a vegetarian, but it's also a great option for anyone that wants to eat healthy and light in the summer. Totally, and this recipe is a cinch to make. Okay, so what are the ingredients? So for this recipe, we're going to use one large tomato, one onion, one 14.5 ounce can of chopped tomatoes, one small can of green chilies, fresh cilantro, and hot sauce. Awesome, so what can I do to help? Well, you can start cutting the tomato while I cut the onion. While we're chopping these, we're going to take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors. And when we come back, we'll show you the rest of the recipe. Hey there, do you have achy joints? Doing your skin to look younger and plumper? Well, I have a suggestion for you, and that's taking supplemental collagen. So first of all, what's collagen? Well, collagen comes from the cartilage and bones and joints and skin of animals, and it's cooked down and dried and contained in a powdered form, so you can actually take it supplementally. Now, our ancestors, of course, didn't take collagen as a supplement. They naturally got it in their diet from consuming lots of bone broth and the entire animal. But in our modern diet, we focus mostly on eating muscle meat, so we're missing out on all the benefits of collagen in our diet. So what are some of the benefits, Victoria? Exactly, well, it's great for your hair, skin, nails, and joints, and you know, if you're an athlete and there's a lot of wear and tear on your joints, this is essential. So if you're a runner, I would definitely pick some of this up. 
It's also a very clean source of protein. The one we have here is grass-fed and organic, which is very important. And it also is a great source of amino acids to support your overall health. Yeah, and as we age, our collagen um, stores actually decrease. So adding it in as a supplement is a wonderful way to really increase the collagen in your body to support your joint health, support your skin health, get those amino acids, and to really have a great source of protein in your diet. Now it's really easy to take and very quickly assimilate it in this form. You can throw it into your smoothie or swirl it into your coffee and tea. It has no taste and it's cold water soluble so it mixes in very easily. So if you want to learn more about supplemental collagen and how to add it into your healthy diet, come visit us at Revelation Health. Victoria and I are the staff health coaches here and we'll happily talk with you and give you a free health evaluation. So check us out and talk to you soon. Welcome back. So Sydney, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it's like being a vegetarian? Yeah, of course. About three years ago, my freshman year of high school, I decided to become a vegetarian and it's been a really good decision, I think, for me personally. Um, I just did it because I've always loved animals and I saw some videos in health class that kind of changed my mind about the food industry, but I'm not the kind of person that would be like, wow, you can't eat meat, like what are you doing? I totally respect everyone's opinion, it just makes me feel a little bit better about my decisions. So I like to eat things like salsa and guacamole and hummus, like have good tasting snacks even though I don't eat meat. Great, well why don't we start blending everything together? Yeah, that sounds great. Alright, so first we're going to add our can of tomatoes. Okay. And after that, we're gonna add our can of chilies. Okay. So colorful. <laughs> and then we're gonna add half of our onion. Okay. I'll get this knife. So pull them off. Okay. Great. So now we're going to just puree that together. All right. So now we're gonna add our hot sauce. And you can always add more hot sauce later if you want to make it any hotter. Ooh, I do like a lot of spice in my sauce. <laughs> Me <huge> too. Fan. <laughs> Great, that looks good. So now we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. And this time we're only going to pulse that together because we want to make sure that our ingredients don't become chopped too finely. Oh, that makes sense. Now we're just going to pour it in our bowl, okay. and then it'll be refrigerated for about an hour. All right. But since we don't have an hour to wait, we can just grab the other one that we already have made. Here we go. Great, it looks so good. This is my favorite part, because now we get to taste it. <laughs> so here's some chips. All right. All right, I'm so excited. <laughs> it's really good. That's some of the best salsa I think I've ever had. Thank you so much for having me to make this. It was delicious, and I'm definitely gonna make this at home all the time now. You can see this recipe and others on ttystv.com. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Wow, that was such a great episode. Even though I didn't get to drive, I still learned so much. Like a cool tip I learned was take a picture of your license in case you forget it at home. Yeah, that's, that's a really good cool. cool tip. What about you guys? You got all right, when you're when it's super icy outside and it's snowing and it's raining and you're going around a curve, you actually need to keep the steering wheel straight and not completely to the right, or you'll end up going right off the road, which is wild to me because you think, oh no, you just turn it completely to whichever way you're going. Mm -hmm. I learned that when you're braking, you should always have the wheel straight. It's best to brake with your wheel straight to avoid any conflicts on the road. And I think the most important thing I took out of this was that in panic situations on the road, you should never stop taking control of the wheel. Like if you just let it go or if you freeze up, there's so many more accidents that could happen rather than Be you correct. trying to like fix the situation because you can and you can save a lot of injuries. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode and we'll talk, talk to, to you soon. soon.
Another day is dawning, a new song on the air. A brand new hope is forming, adventure take me there. Yes. Woo! Jump. It's Woo! Woo! Energy, energy, energy. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Are you in? I'm rolling. I'm rolling. I got that. Alright, awesome. I am so fortunate. 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 I am so The previous program has been paid for by Right Road Productions Incorporated.